Good morning, I'm Julio Sainz along with Mauricio Riveros. Today we'll meet Victor Antonetti, a local musician who's opened up his own event center. We hope you will be inspired. Celebrating leaders in Rochester's unique and vibrant business community, we'll meet entrepreneurs whose passion and perseverance have helped push through life's challenges. Join us as we share their stories and journeys to success. It's time to be inspired. Victor, thank you very much for being inspired. A shop that we designed to inspire our community and interview people like you who have innovative business, new ideas. And so tell us, who is Victor? Okay, well, first of all, thank you for, for having me. Uh, Victor Antonetti is a born and raised Rochesterian. Uh, I come back, I come from a musical family. Um, practically everyone in my family either cooks or, or plays an instrument and, and um, we, we just have a, a good time, very close family. That is wonderful. So you are in a family who, who really loves the arts and yes. the music yes. and all those things. But now you have, you are in the business. You just open a, a salon. So tell us a little bit about your business. So I opened a place called the Avalon. Um, my background is in music and, and doing uh, events. So I perform with a lot of artists and travel a lot uh, with, with artists, um, you know, like Tito Nieves and and Jose Alberto, so we, we've played uh, a, a lot. So I had before would bring a lot of artists into Rochester. So I had the opportunity to, to open a place. Um, and so the Avalon now is a place where not so much that it's just focused on music, but it's, it's open to the public. So, you know, I've had uh, comedy shows, I've had, uh, you know, different bands, um, I've had well, birthday parties, retirement parties, so it's open to the public. Um, but I, I do, uh, from time to time, you know, bring in artists um, from out of town and, and keep the live uh, entertainment and, and, you know, and have a, a venue for, for that as well, so, mm -hmm. yeah. And so, uh, I know that there's a lot of business involved with uh, being in the music business, it's not mm -hmm. just, playing great music, there's a lot of business aspects to it. What uh, made you decide to open up uh, uh, an events, a center for events, instead of just the musical part? Um, I, I wanted to give an opportunity to, for just to have different things. Um, you know, m most of the, the places are just, um, you know, it, it, it's open and, you know, you have DJs and, and you know, people come. And, but this is, is, it's open to the public. So, like I said, it's, it's something where anyone can come and enjoy the, the facility. I can change things around um, besides the live music. Uh, you know, like I said, you know, the retirement parties, the just, you know, we, we've had people, we have dance classes that, you know, they teach dance classes on there. Um, we have people that just want to come and, and use the space for whatever needs are. Um, you know, people come and do Zumba in there, people come and do, you know, different types of things. And mm -hmm. I think it's, um, it's nice because I don't, I don't get bored. <laughs> There's always something going on, mm -hmm. uh, something different all the time. Um, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's not what I, what I expected. So, you know, when you open up a business, you know, you have a goal of things, how, how you want things to go and, and learning the administrative part now along with, you know, things that I used to do before uh, on the music side. Um, it's, it's a challenge, but it's, it's something that I, I, I really enjoy. Mm. And that's the power of business, that you can continue to do your dream, do your dream, which is the music and the art, that combine also with an element that will give you the resources necessary for your growth and expansion and things like that. So let's touch a little bit more the music, uh, music aspect right now and talk about, you know, what type of music uh, do you like to play and what's your, your expertise, CDs or, you know, well now you are probably on the iPhone or, or, <laughs> or the iMusic or whatever it is. Uh, you are probably online. So let's talk a little bit about the music aspect. Well, the music aspect, um, uh, the band, uh, Orquesta Antonetti, um, we're going to be celebrating 50 years uh, now in, in April, which was a, a band that uh, my father originated. Um, and we, we have a lot of songs. Um, we have uh, quite a few videos on, on YouTube. The music is on Spotify, on, on iTunes, on CD Baby. So it's, it's worldwide. Um, you know, we get a lot of publicity. We get um, in Peru. Uh, we've played in Peru and, and we've, we do a lot of radio station ads and, and they play it there a lot, um, Mexico. 
So, you know, the, the band has definitely grown being, you know, from Rochester, New York. So, um, you know, we're, we're very proud of that. Um, and it's, it's just fun to, to, you know, there's so many artists that this band has played with. Um, you know, we've, you know, we, we, you know, not only have we played alongside with Gran Combo and Tinto Puente and, and, and people like that, that, you know, we, we know and are actually, you know, friends with, um, we've backed up, you know, uh, pretty much any artist, um, singer, um, legends, you know, the, the Orca Orquesta Antonetti has, has backed up. So we're, we're very proud mm -hmm. of that too. But speaking of the business side of the music world, uh, we know so much has changed with CDs going away and it's all digital downloads and now the subscription services. If someone who's listening and wants to go into the music business, um, the perception that I've seen is that you have to make your music playing live, but, or can you still make music, can you still make money with the distribution of the music? The sale of the music. Itself. Yeah, it's it, it's tough. Everything has has changed. Um, before, so many people were recording records and were doing, you know, eight, nine, ten songs. Now people are concentrating on singles, because CDs. I mean, music doesn't sell anymore. And now you can buy a song for ninety nine cents. Um, now people are doing a lot of videos because people want to visualize, you know, the songs. And a lot of artists now marketing is is so much. Is, is, is as important as it is as having a good product because you can have a good product and if no one knows about it then no one's ever going to hear it so a lot of people that I speak to and a lot of musicians they're like you know the 10,000 you were going to spend on this recording put that in marketing because you know you'll get that from you know performing and traveling and, and continue that way so things have changed a lot. Mm -hmm. well, that is, uh, is interesting because the reality is, is true that has changed and has other type of complexity, but at the same time, you have now a broader market and a quick capacity to, to, uh, to reach millions, literally, yes. and be able to go a spiral and go, if something hits, can really hit nicely, and you, you're talking significantly amount of money that you can make if something really hits quick. So what are the strategies that you are start using to be able to, to go f you know, f and, and, and explode and go and try to outreach the largest uh, you know, check in YouTube or any of those things? What are the strategies that you guys are using? Um, invite everyone, accept mm. everyone's friend request mm. uh, when it comes to, to marketing. Um, don't, don't be afraid of, of, of sharing what you've done. Like there's, you know, my father recorded a record in 1970 and I think that has more hits than, mm. <laughs> than, than any other of our songs. And, and people from Mexico, um, you know, I've gotten phone calls, I've gotten messages from people from Mexico say, oh my God, this is one of my favorite songs. So, um, you know, definitely don't, don't be scared to, to, to push the music and put things out there. I mean, you know, you, you can use an example of Justin Bieber. He, you know, he, he got famous from YouTube, mm. you know, so people saw him more on YouTube than they did on, on another, you know, uh, on television or, or you know the radio so you know you have to use those media outlets and social um, outlets to, to promote as, as much as you can. Mm -hmm. mm. I've always wanted to ask this of someone that comes from a musical family. What percentage of musical accomplishment is genetics? You just got it in your blood from being from a musical family and what percentage is the hard work of practicing? Um, <laughs> You definitely have to practice, you know, you have to practice. There's a lot of people that have just natural talent. There's people that just have it. Um, and it's, 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 a lot of, it's a lot of work. You have to, you know, you have to keep your chops, you know, what we call up mm -hmm. all the time. Um, you have to have the passion for it. You know, a lot of times from love of, of something, it becomes work. So you have to be able to, to have, you know, to put in the work and continue to have that passion, which is, it's, it's hard to do, you know, you, you go through things in life that, you know, you just don't have time to practice anymore because you have responsibilities and you have things like that, but you still have to have that passion in order for you to continue. Mm. And that's so essential, you know, uh, because sometimes people lose the passion and then it's just a job or it's just a work. And then there is something spiritually that happened that breaks basically, and especially with music. Music mm -hmm. is something that, you really transfer those feelings, those emotions through song, and, and that has power. 
and music has power to change history. You know, you see a trial around the history, music has been used for good, bad, and ugly, mm -hmm. and the reality is music is changing. Now, let's talk about changing music, because it's interesting, you know, I was uh, listening to some iracundos, it was, this was in, in probably the what, 70s, 80s in South America, famous group, and, but, but now you, you put to your kids and you try to transfer that, it's like, wait, I mean, <laughs> what, what you are seeing here, but, yeah. so what's the future of music? Technology, innovation is changing, but how do you see the future? And, and, and there are classics that will never change. Uh, you know, what's your perspective? Yeah, <laughs> well, you're, you're, you're always gonna have classics. My, mm. my, my kids are into singing and they're into plays. And, you know, they, my, you know, my son loves, you know, uh, you know Elton John, he, he, you know, he loves um, uh, different things that I, I would never have imagined, mm. you know, that, that they're listening to. Um, so, you know, the, the, music, the music has changed a lot. Um, it, it's, you know, the, the kids now that listen to music and just sometimes amazes me because, you know, you have the rap, you have the hip hop and stuff. And you just, when I hear my kids singing some of, some of that music, I'm like, how do you remember all the lyrics? Well, thank you, Victor. We'll be back with more after these messages. Now with the uh, technology behind the music, it seems like I remember, you know, that you used to have to go to this big, huge recording studio to lay down tracks and mm -hmm. create an album. But now you can almost do that with a laptop, or is yeah, that too a much lot of, an extreme? No, a lot of people do. A lot of people do um, with laptops. The technology has changed. So, you know, before, uh, you know, you can get a $100 mic that, you know, before a three thousand dollar mic used to be able to do because of the technology um there's still things that you still have to go to a professional studio if you want you know but it depends on the person it depends on the ear it depends on there's so many things you know the the beatles recorded their their record in a four track mm -hmm. and it's still probably one of the best hit you know uh of recordings um so it, you know you you have to know your craft um you have to have an ear for it um and you have to you know you have to work at it. You have to, you know, pay your dues. Right. And now, talking a little bit about the service and innovation, right? Uh, one thing that I remember in the old times, you, you fall in love with a girl and you will go and play, you know, you will take some mariachis and serenade. go and play, the serenata, serenade, and go out and play. Uh, do you guys do any of that with the group that go a, a party or something and surprise? Uh, do you guys do that type of thing with your group or not really? Not with my band because it's so big. <laughs> it's a 14-piece it's a band. So, mm -hmm. you know, having trumpets and having, you know, the rhythm section, you know. Right. The, m most of the places now, we don't even fit in some of the clubs because oh. they're so small now. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, we do have a lot of family parties. You know, my grandmother still comes out to the to the parties, and we still have to play for her, and we still have to do so. That's always a family tradition that you know, where mm. when we do get together, you can guarantee that there's about five or six congas, and people have sticks, and they have maracas, and and there's going to be a jam session. Mm -hmm. That's that's what we're about. Right. Now, your the, your business, the Avalon, is located on State Street. What's yes, the 470 State Street, uh, the rear entrance. Um, it's, it's, it's a place, you know, the, the atmosphere is great. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, it, it, it's open to, to everyone. We do all type of events. Right. Um, and me personally, I, I love focusing on, on live music. So I do something on my own. So if I look at the calendar and there's some dates that are, are, okay, I don't have anything here. Let me, you know, let me call this artist that I know. Let me try to do something here. You know, we do a lot for the community. Uh, we have fundraisers. Right. Um, that that we we love to do mm -hmm. um, because the band itself too you know we 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 do a lot of donation things and and so we always try to give back mm -hmm. at least you know myself and, and my family um, so you know it's it's open to to the public. But we've worked on a couple of fundraisers there and we actually had our uh, staff Christmas party. Yes, yes, at, yes. at your place. So you, will you work with uh, 
someone that wants to have an event like a staff Christmas party. Uh, oh yeah, quinceanera. Every, everything. Yeah, quinceanera, staff. Uh, we even had you know f funeral you know recessions that after that people wanted to come and just have food and people just wanted to talk and and things sure. like that. So you know, it, so it's you guys provide the catering and all. Mm -hmm. that stuff. Yeah, we have caterers that 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 can come in, licensed caterers. Um, we do have food there, so you know that's and and. I do let people go ahead and, and you know, it, it's nice that they can have different types of food from different licensed uh, caterers. So it's not, you know, sometimes you go to a certain place and you have to get their menu or their mm -hmm. food. So, you know, we, we want that diversity and, in, in, you know, the culture. Mm. That's talking about culture. Now, most of the music that you play is in Spanish, English. You have both? Uh, the, most of the music that I play is in Spanish. But well, we've had, you know, a lot of bands, um, jazz music, you know, we've had rock bands, you know. Um, so, yeah, there's always a variety, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. great, you know. Mm -hmm. So this is an interesting question, I think. <laughs> Being someone who, uh, you know, works at uh, Poder, a radio station that plays Latin music. And I was trying to explain to somebody um, who wasn't Hispanic how um, the styles in Latin music do change, but you can still get away with playing salsa that's been around for 50, 40, 50 years or longer. Mm. And so why do you think mm. some, some Latin styles of music persist? They stay consistent. Merengue has been around forever. Mm -hmm. It's not, whereas if you listen to a lot of music in, in English, um, things change very rapidly. The style that, what was in style five years ago is not gonna play now. The generation that's listening to music now, they may appreciate a few things, but it's, it's not the same as it is now. Whereas you can take a salsa from 40 years ago, play it today play it in probably 40 more years and there still would be an audience to it and the younger generations would still listen to it. What do you, what do you attribute that longevity to? I think um, honestly because salsa and bachata merengue, it's dance music. So, you know, people, even though they'll dance it differently and, and they'll, they'll change um, because the styles do change, um, sounds, change so they'll make it sound like a salsa they'll make it sound more urban now because now they put a lot of more keyboard things and things like that and they'll change the style of singing but the rhythm and the music is always there mm. and it's and it's dance music so they're 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 going to dance mm -hmm. they're going to dance so i think that's w the longevity of the styles um continue because you know it, it's 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 dance music mm. and i want to ask this question that i always think, uh, you know, because when you run a business, there is a lot of communication and coordination and teamwork. When you are running a band, there is definitely a communication, teamwork, and coordination. What are the principles that being a leader in an orchestra and being a leader of, in the music have been used for you, useful for you in your business? So if you can identify those principles. Yeah, you, you definitely have to have the communication. I mean, dealing with 14 musicians, um, you know, different attitudes, and I can do this, I can't do that, I don't want to do this, I, you know, so. Egos, yeah. Yeah, the egos, so you, you're always working with that. Um, you know, I've been blessed um, with the Avalon because, you know, it's, it's a small, knit family. My daughter, you know, helps me run it. She, you know, she would tell you that she runs the place. So, um, you know, my aunt, they, you know, they help me, and, and we talk a lot, and, and we're always, things that work, things that didn't work, um, what we need to do, um, what we need to change. So there's always, you know, we have to go to the need of, of the consumer. So, you know, we, and, and being that we do different types of parties, there's different things that we have to have. Um, when it comes to, you know, beverages, you know, you go to the Hispanics, they like drinking a certain thing, you know, you go to the, um, to the blacks and they like, you know, certain drinks, you know, you go to the whites and they like, you know, so it's, you, you have to go to what the consumer wants. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the communication has to be there. Bartenders, we get different bartenders that, hey, you, you know, I know they like martinis, you know, do you make great martinis? So, you know, you always have to try mm -hmm. to work for, for the consumer. Mm -hmm. Okay. As far as trying to um, market the new business, uh, uh, you know, it's a relatively new business. What are some of your strategies to get the word out about the location? Uh, definitely, um, you know, uh, Facebook. Uh, we do a lot of social media. Um, you know, we're now working on a new website. But to be honest, um, word of mouth goes, goes a long way in this community. Mm -hmm. If people have a good time, you know, if they enjoy the place, you know, I, I get a lot of referrals. I, I honestly get 
um, four to five phone calls a week hmm. uh, for events. You know, I'm already booked in August, you know, September. I'm already booked for 2021. Um, so, you know, that, and that makes us feel good. It hmm. makes us feel good that we're doing something right or we're at least going in the right step. Mm, that's powerful, Victor. And now, future. 30 years, the band has been working and has mm -hmm. been playing amazing music. What are the next 30 years? Where, is you, where do you see the future? The future is to, you know, show the youth, to help the youth continue um, in, in, in arts, in any style of music. Hopefully my, my, my kids will continue with, you know, with you know salsa and, and uh, but they they do like they do like plays they do like different country music they 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 love it all um, so anything that they can do that you know that'll continue you know the the legacy and and, and the music and the arts um, I'm I'm there 100 percent for them. Victor, I love the passion I uh, love the dedication for many years bringing our culture. Uh, you are an ambassador and represent who we are as a community and I think that's powerful being born in Rochester but be able to maintain the roots where you come from is fundamental. For that reason I want to say thank you very much yeah. and I am sure that we will have you in a future program and learning more of the great things that you are doing. Thank, thank you. you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Coming up next week on Be Inspired, we'll meet Kimberly Jones, new CEO of Butler Till. To watch today's episode and the complete interviews of our guests, go to rochesterfirst.com slash be inspired. For more great talk with Rochester's entrepreneurs, listen to Bodet 97.1, Saturdays at 9 a.m. For Mauricio Riveros, I'm Julio Sainz. We'll see you next week on Be Inspired.